This is Oakuni. It's a small place tucked away against the bush-covered flank of Ruapehu. Oakuni is typical of towns all over New Zealand, but it's earned itself a certain distinction. Today is Thursday, and Thursdays have a special significance to Alistair McQuinney and his father, and generally to all the parents and children of this town. It has significance to people like Wig and Lynn Whale, who along with raising a family of four, have turned a few acres of stump-strewn burnout into a highly productive farm. Like most people round here, what they have, they got through hard work. The Lim Joes also consider Thursdays worth their attention. They, like the whales and like most families in this township, have children of primary school age. With coins clinking in tins, purses and satchels, or clasped moistly in hot little hands, the young people of Oakuni walk, cycle and in other ways get to school as intact as possible. Some of them have quite a distance to go by school bus, like Murray Haycock and his sister Margaret. Or like this boy from the Karaoe forestry settlement. And even Jenny Rogel has to follow a long and narrow path from her home on the edge of the bush. Altogether, there are a lot of them, and they come from as far as 20 miles away, full of the high spirit that makes them want to play, even at half past eight in the morning. And if their spirits seem even higher today, it may be because it's Thursday, banking day for school savings, and that can be quite exciting. For instance, who'll win the class shield for the biggest number of deposits this week? Will it be Delma Miles' class, Ian Peake's, Standard 2, or Form 1, where Mary Lim is taught. No one will know until 11 o'clock assembly, after some lessons have been done and banking is over. Filling in deposit forms calls for great concentration, and rightly so. This high finance business can't be dismissed lightly. And as it's a nice day outside, at least one member of the class would like to get out in the sunshine for a while. All right, you can bring up your bank books when you're ready. No, I'm sorry, Roland. Incidents like this make Banking Day very interesting for teachers as well as children. And when banking's over, there's the class concert at mid-morning assembly. This week, Prima Four are presenting Chicken Little. As deposits are entered by Mary McDougall of the post office, Prima Four takes its final curtain call. announcement you've all been waiting a long time to hear. Banking. In 1955, the winning school was Oa Cooney. <laughs> Not only that, your total of nearly 12,000 deposits was the highest ever recorded by any one school in any one year. I want to congratulate you boys and girls on a very fine achievement. We intend to win again this year. I'm going to ask Mr. Briars to come forward now and tell you of the progress we're making this year, this week. Mr. Briars? <coughs> Thank you, I too would like to congratulate you all on your splendid banking achievement. It was truly a fine effort indeed. Now, I know you're all waiting to hear who has won the Banking Shield for this week. 
I have much pleasure in announcing that the winners were first with 96.7%, Primo Foray. Second, Form 2, 95%, and third, Standard 2 with 91.8%. I would now like the representatives of Form 1, last week's winners, and Primo Foray to come forward and carry out the presentation of the shield. We would like to congratulate you very much on winning the banking shield. It is as much a surprise to see a primer class take it from standard. Thank you. Four one, on behalf of Primer 4, I would like to thank you for the banking shield. And we hope that next week some other primer class will win it. Thank you. Sad to say there are some very active opponents to this saving scheme. Well-known characters like the bank robber, the lolly addict, the coin dropper, the forgetter, and of course, the uncooperative parent. Fortunately, Oakuni doesn't seem to have many uncooperative parents, a fact that's made clear in the way older children are helped to realize the value of money by earning most of their savings deposits. Right, Stan. With all this good weather we're having, can you get a working party for the baths? Oh, I think so. How many jugs will we get to go to the baths tomorrow? Will we get a dozen jugs to go over? Three. Yeah. yeah. Many ideas yeah, that have benefited the town right. have come from just such club gatherings as this, with Mayor Frank Martin and Stan Thomas keeping the boys on the community ball. A true community in the sense that everyone knows everyone else, Oakuni is a large borough with a small population. But there's nothing small about its projects. The children's competitive saving is part of the wider community spirit of the adults. This is the spirit that makes them give their time and their money to any plan that will help the town along. A working bee like this can be a real day out for families on the job. And while the men use their muscles, the women make sure they don't go hungry. Apart from a swimming pool, a playing field and a few smaller projects, Oakuni has taken on Ruapehu itself and is pushing a road up its western slope towards the snowfields. The upward trend can be seen in everything this town tackles, from ski grounds to school savings. And it's the spirit of the people that's making Oakuni the community it is. The spirit that will serve these young citizens well as they grow up and go ahead with their town. <laughs>